When it comes to finding overall value right now, our next guest points to October as a seasonally iffy part of the year, expecting investors to buy whatever dip emerges this month because the positive tailwinds into year-end, he says, are stronger than the headwinds. Joining us today is Tom Lee, Fundstrat Global Advisors Managing Partner, a CNBC contributor. Hey, Tom, good to see you. Hey, Carl, how are you? I'm good. What what do we make of the market in light of the jobs number and a VIX, which I know you're watching, but is still close to 20 today? Uh, yes. I mean, I think we're in a tricky period um, because there are these sort of complications, which is um, geopolitical risk. We've got the port strike out of the way. And I know October has these seasonals. I, I think it's very good news to see the stock market react positively to a jobs report because it is in fact, a good report showing the, the economy is actually not only holding up, but the unemployment rates down. Uh, but I agree with you. The VIX is important to tell us how much we could rally. Um, I know our head of technical strategy, Mark Newton, thinks that we're making intraday lows today and it's setting up for us to make new highs next week. I, I mean, to me, that makes sense just because it has been a resilient economy. And then next week we get CPI. But I do think it's hard to say this is a green light into year end because, as you're pointing out, the VIX is just staying stubbornly high. Tom, uh, we've seen some changes in, in the swaps market with regard to expectations for future uh, rate cuts, at least in terms of magnitude. How does that alter the calculus, if at all, for the equity markets? If it is now looking more like a 25 basis point cut in November instead of 50 basis points uh, in those weightings changing, does that impact expectations in the equity market or that's not really priced in at this point in time? Well, the we know that uh, Fed fund futures and expectations about the magnitude of cuts over the next couple of meetings does affect the bond market. And we're seeing that reaction today. And, I, I, you know, of course, I'm even seeing some folks think the Fed made a mistake with 50. But for the stock market, I think what matters more is really the Fed. The Fed is actually in an easing cycle and we're making our way towards neutral. And so I, I think that there is going to be times where the stock market, where the S&P is going to rise, even if yields are up. I think we're in an instant there because yields can be rising because the economic data is better. And so we're kind of rising for good reasons on yields. And I think that's supportive of a stock. So I'm I'm not too bothered if, if the odds of a 50 have dropped today because of a good jobs report, because I don't think it means the Fed is suddenly backpedaling and, and back to hiking mode. On China, Tom, uh, is, it, is it good for global growth, uh, but how is it offset, if at all, uh, by any kind of drains to liquidity or just the rush of hot money uh, to either cover shorts over there or try to play along with this? Uh, I think on balance, it's very good news that China's PBOC and the government have launched a, a bazooka series of measures uh, because it has been, you know, on a relative basis, a drag not only on the global economy, but a, a huge underperformer for the past 10 years. Um, I don't think U.S. investors are selling their U.S. equities or even small cap stocks to buy China. I, I think it's coming out of all this cash on the sidelines. We know margin debt hasn't moved for four months and it's still way below the 2021 highs of 936 billion. And we know there's six trillion cash on the sidelines. So I think this is motivating money into action, but it, it's overall, I think, a positive. In this segment, Tom Lee, a market analyst, is discussing his views on the stock market, particularly regarding small cap stocks and the broader S&P 500 index. Here are the key points he makes. Nuanced outlook, Tom's perspective on the market isn't black and white, he recognizes complexities and variations in the market dynamics. Long-term versus short-term views, while he remains optimistic about small cap stocks in the long term, he expresses some caution in the near term. This distinction is important for his followers, who may be looking for clear, actionable advice. Market volatility, he acknowledges potential bumpiness or volatility in the market due to upcoming events, specifically mentioning an election that is about to take place. In this excerpt, Tom Lee is discussing the current uncertainties facing investors, particularly two significant risks, rising tensions in the Middle East and a potential port strike that could severely impact the economy. Here's a breakdown of his key points. 1. Investor uncertainty, Lee highlights that investors are currently grappling with these geopolitical and economic risks, which create a sense of unpredictability in the market. 
In this segment, Tom Lee, a market analyst, is discussing his views on the stock market, particularly regarding small cap stocks and the broader S&P 500 index. Here are the key points he makes. Nuanced outlook, Tom's perspective on the market isn't black and white, he recognizes complexities and variations in the market dynamics. Long-term versus short-term views. Price target, despite the near-term uncertainties, Tom maintains a bullish long-term target for the S&P 500, predicting it could reach 6,000 by the end of the year. Overall, Tom is communicating a balanced view, while he sees challenges in the short term, he is still optimistic about the long-term trajectory of the market. For temporary setbacks, he emphasizes that any downgrades in earnings or disappointing results from companies due to the port strike would be short-term issues. In his view, these do not fundamentally alter the long-term trajectory of the market. Overall, Lee is encouraging investors to remain optimistic and consider market dips as chances to invest, despite the immediate challenges posed by geopolitical tensions and potential economic disruptions. Lee also reflects on the market conditions leading up to these conflicts. He points out that the market tends to react differently depending on its position, whether it's at highs or lows, before a conflict starts. In the current scenario, he highlights that the market is hovering near its highs, suggesting that this could influence how it responds to any potential geopolitical tensions. Overall, Lee's message seems to be that while wars can create uncertainty, they don't always lead to long-term market declines, and timing based on market conditions is crucial. In this segment, Tom Lee is discussing the current state of the market and some key economic indicators. Here are the main points. 1. Market valuations. Lee acknowledges that stock valuations are not particularly cheap, indicating that multiples, like price-to-earnings ratios, are high, which may suggest that stocks are overvalued. 2. Cash on the sidelines. He notes that there's a significant amount of cash that hasn't been invested yet, as margin debt, money borrowed to buy stocks, has remained stable for four months despite a rising market. This suggests investors are cautious, preferring to keep cash rather than investing heavily in stocks. 3. T Fed policy context, Lee highlights that money market cash balances are increasing, which is unusual when the Federal Reserve is cutting interest rates. This accumulation of cash could indicate that investors are preparing for potential opportunities or risks. 4. Potential economic impact of strikes. He discusses the potential economic consequences of a longshoreman strike, suggesting that if it persists, it could negatively impact GDP growth. He quantifies this impact, estimating a 0.3% reduction in GDP for every week the strike continues. 5. Fed's response to economic changes. Lee raises the question of how the Federal Reserve might respond to such economic disruptions. He wonders whether the Fed would implement more aggressive interest rate cuts to stimulate the economy, while also considering inflationary pressures that might limit their ability to do so. Overall, Lee is painting a complex picture of the market, weighing the risks of high valuations and economic disruptions against the potential for cash-driven investment and the Fed's policy actions. In this excerpt, Tom Lee discusses how the Federal Reserve, Fed, is likely to adjust its approach to monetary policy based on current economic indicators, particularly the labor market and inflation pressures. 2. Upcoming payroll report. He references an upcoming payroll report that he anticipates might show better-than-expected job numbers. Positive labor data could counterbalance concerns about a weakening labor market. 3. Inflation pressures. Lee also mentions potential inflationary pressures stemming from factors like labor strikes and rising oil prices in the Middle East. He implies that these could complicate the Fed's decisions, as rising inflation can lead to higher interest rates. 4. Consumer expectations. He points out that the Fed would be more concerned if consumer expectations around inflation became unanchored, meaning people start expecting inflation to rise significantly. However, he believes those expectations have been improving, allowing the Fed to be less worried about inflation at the moment. 5. China's economic situation. Finally, Li touches on China's economic actions, suggesting that aggressive measures taken there, referred to as launching a bazooka, are having a positive impact on its stock market, which is performing well. Overall, Li is suggesting that the Fed's strategy will hinge on labor market conditions and inflation expectations, and that there are mixed signals from both labor data and international events that could influence their decisions. Tom Li, a prominent market strategist, is providing insight into the current state of the Chinese market in relation to global investing trends, particularly compared to the U.S. market. This conversation likely arises from broader discussions about global economic shifts and the implications for investors navigating this complex landscape. China, with its unique political and economic system, presents both opportunities and significant risks. 
short-term versus long-term perspectives. 1. Long-term risks, Li expresses a cautionary stance toward long-term investments in China. He characterizes investing there as a bad bet on communists, which reflects a fundamental concern about the stability and predictability of investing in a country with a single-party political system that emphasizes state control over many aspects of the economy. The risks associated with such governance can include political instability, decisions made by the Communist Party can be sudden and opaque, affecting market conditions unpredictably. Regulatory environment, investors often face stringent regulations that can change without notice, making it difficult to operate businesses or invest securely. Human rights concerns, issues surrounding human rights and international relations can also create volatility, affecting investor sentiment and market performance. 2. Short-term opportunities, despite these long-term concerns, Lee suggests that there may be opportunities for short-term gains. He indicates that there has already been a significant market move in China, which might present a good entry point for investors looking to capitalize on a potential recovery or rally. Factors contributing to this perspective include market corrections, after prolonged underperformance, markets can sometimes rebound sharply as valuations become attractive. Li notes that even if China doubles in value, it would still be underperforming compared to the US by a significant margin, suggesting that there's still room for a rally. Global economic trends, external factors, such as shifts in global demand, trade policies, or changes in commodity prices, could benefit certain sectors in China, providing opportunities for savvy investors. Recent economic policies, if the Chinese government implements policies aimed at stimulating the economy or improving the business climate, there could be a short-term boost in market confidence and investment. Historical context of underperformance. Li references a striking statistic, over the past decade, China has underperformed the US market by 7,700 basis points. This substantial gap highlights the challenges faced by Chinese equities and underscores the potential for recovery. If one considers this historical underperformance, a significant market move, whether a rally or recovery, could be expected to realign China's performance with that of other global markets, at least in the short term. The unique nature of China's economic system. Li's comments also touch on the complex interplay of capitalism and communism in China, which he suggests isn't as straightforward as traditional views of either system. This hybrid model creates a unique investment environment that could be described in various ways, perhaps humorously referencing Bidenomics as a portmanteau. Key considerations here include State capitalism, China operates under a model that blends state control with capitalist market dynamics. This means that while there are market opportunities, the state has a significant influence over key sectors, which can complicate investment decisions. Evolving economic policies, the Chinese government's willingness to adapt its policies to incorporate elements of market-driven capitalism means that the environment can be dynamic. Investors need to stay informed about policy changes and their potential impacts on various industries. Conclusion In summary, Tom Lee's remarks present a nuanced view of the investment landscape in China. While he warns of long-term risks associated with the country's political structure and historical performance, he also highlights potential short-term opportunities for investors willing to engage with the market now. The dual nature of China's economic system, combining elements of both capitalism and communism, adds layers of complexity to this investment decision-making process. Ultimately, investors must weigh these factors carefully, balancing the allure of short-term gains against the backdrop of long-term uncertainties. Li's insights encourage a thoughtful approach to investing in China, suggesting that while opportunities may exist, they come with inherent risks that should not be overlooked. In this segment, market analyst Tom Lee shares his insights on the stock market, with a particular focus on small-cap stocks and the S&P 500 index. Here are the key takeaways from his discussion. Complex market dynamics, Tom emphasizes that the market isn't simply black or white, it has intricate dynamics that can vary significantly. Cautious optimism for small-cap stocks, while he holds a long-term positive outlook for small-cap stocks, he advises some caution in the short term. This nuanced perspective is essential for investors seeking clear guidance. Volatility ahead, he acknowledges potential market volatility, particularly with an impending election that could create uncertainty. Balanced perspective, overall, he presents a measured view, recognizing short-term hurdles but maintaining a positive long-term outlook for the market. Investor uncertainty, Tom notes that investors are facing significant geopolitical and economic risks, notably rising tensions in the Middle East and a potential port strike, leading to market unpredictability. Buying opportunities, he suggests that if these issues cause a market dip, it could present a good buying opportunity, as he believes the long-term outlook remains bright. 
Historical context, drawing from past experiences, like the pandemic's economic shutdown, he illustrates that crises often provide chances for strategic investments. Temporary setbacks, he stresses that any earnings downgrades due to the port strike would be short-lived and wouldn't fundamentally alter the market's trajectory. Optimistic outlook, ultimately, Tom encourages investors to view market fluctuations as opportunities, even amid current geopolitical tensions. Geopolitical conflicts and markets, Tom discusses how historical military tensions typically don't result in severe market downturns. He points out that during past conflicts, investing shortly after military action often yielded positive results, though the Russia-Ukraine war coincided with tightening monetary policy, complicating the investment landscape. Market positioning. He observes that market reactions to conflicts can differ based on whether the market is at a high or low point, noting the current market is near its highs. Market valuations. Tom assesses that stock valuations are on the higher side, indicating potential overvaluation. He observes that many investors are holding on to cash rather than heavily investing in stocks. Cash accumulation, the increase in money market cash balances suggests a cautious stance among investors, possibly preparing for future opportunities or risks. Impact of strikes, he addresses the potential economic consequences of a longshoreman strike, estimating a GDP reduction of 0.3% for every week it continues. Fed's response to economic changes, Tom questions how the Federal Reserve might adjust its policies in response to these economic disruptions, weighing the balance between stimulating the economy and managing inflation. Labor market dynamics, Tom discusses the Fed's potential shift towards a more dovish stance if labor market conditions weaken, hinting at a focus on supportive measures like lower interest rates. Upcoming payroll report, he mentions an anticipated payroll report that could show better-than-expected job numbers, which might mitigate concerns about a weakening labor market. Inflation pressures, rising inflation due to factors like labor strikes and oil prices could complicate the Fed's decisions, as higher inflation often leads to increased interest rates. Consumer expectations, he notes that the Fed would be concerned if consumer inflation expectations became unanchored, but currently, these expectations seem to be improving. China's economic context, lastly, Tom offers insights into the Chinese market, noting both the risks and opportunities present. He expresses caution toward long-term investments in China, citing concerns about the stability of its political system and governance.